Happy Friday, everyone. Uh, hope you all have been enjoying the KubeCon so far and also the rest of time. So today we are going to focus on topic of uh, um, model serving on Kubernetes. Um, so my name is Dan. I run the inference platform at Bloomberg. Um, I'm Theophilos. I'm uh, working for AWS. Okay, so um, before getting started, like I want to know, like uh, um, so today we talk about the really the last mileage of the um, the entire machine learning lifecycle um, to deploy your model to production. So I wonder, like, uh, how many people here like uh, are able to get uh, your uh, AI model service up and running on your laptop? Anyone able to have ever done that before? How long would it how long it would take? Minutes? Hours? Um, how many of you are able to get your model to production? Cool, fair bit. Um, and how many of you are able to uh, get up running on Kubernetes? Oh, wow. So <laughs> more than what I expected. Uh, um, how many of you are able to deploy a large language model? OK. One, two, three. Cool. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's talk about that. So how um, uh, able like a K server is able to help you like deploy your actually large language models, for example, like ChatGPT, which is uh, kind of hyper. So we'll cover that later. Um, so yes, as you think, like the launching the AI application pilots, uh, uh, relatively easy and uh, deceptively easy. Um, so you can probably uh, uh, load up your model on your laptop and then put it behind a fast API server endpoint, and you can. Standard inference request and pretty easily like get a back response back, right? So, um, but when you uh, think about uh, moving this application to production, uh, it actually gets a lot more complex, and there's uh, uh, lots of things you need to consider. Um, so it's not just a model, and uh, often time you will need to do some feature processing um, for um, to process your image or like uh, uh, tokenize your text inputs, um, and uh, you will need to like. Uh, uh, Deploy the featureization code like uh, with, as a uh, microservice, and to look up a feature store, and your uh, you may have your model on the cloud storage, and you may uh, wonder how you can get that model download onto your like a um, server process or a container, uh, and then how do you communicate between your like a feature transformer and the uh, and the model service, um, and, and uh, on production you um, often time you will need to handle a large amount of data. Uh, uh, simultaneously, so uh, it's critical. You uh, you should be able to uh, um, scale up your uh, uh, inference service uh, in a cost-effective way. Um, and uh, uh, another um, um, top priority, like consideration, is that like you uh, often the time your model maybe like uh, contains sensitive data, so you need to secure your uh, service endpoints uh, and uh, make sure your uh, the service to the service communication between transformer and a predictor is uh, secured and the data is encrypted, uh, and uh, uh, you also need to make sure uh, your model deployment process is repeatable, reproducible. So in case there are out some outage, and you should be able to uh, uh, replicate your deployment pretty quickly in a few minutes, uh, or and make sure it's reproducible, uh, and it, uh, it's also easy um, uh, to roll back to your previous deployment. Um, so, uh, last not the least, um, after your model is deployed, is your deployed production, you need to make sure you have all the available data, like uh, tracing metrics and uh, logs, uh, to uh, analyze the, your model behavior and to make sure it uh, uh, meets your uh, production SRAs uh, or um, uh, analyze the uh, the uh, the pro problem like pretty quickly with all the uh, available observability data. Um, yeah, so uh, Kubernetes actually is a great platform, uh, which provides uh, is a container uh, orchestration uh, platform where you, uh, it's really specifically designed for uh, deploying microservices um, to with all the capability of like a resource management, load balancing, and uh, Kubernetes provides a really nice cloud native way like a YAML uh, spec, which you can like uh, uh, deploy your models with uh, uh, declarative YAMLs. So this really makes sure your uh, deployment is reputable and reproducible. Uh, it can run either on cloud or on prime um, in any like uh, uh, cloud environment, and uh, it also provides the horizontal uh, scaling features. Um, both works on like a CPU and a GPU device, uh, and uh, um, Kubernetes is also fault tolerance uh, by uh, it can detect uh, container failures. Um, it's uh, really resilient uh, to all the outages and it can minimize the downtimes. 
So Kubernetes is great, right? Um, and, uh, but it's uh, uh, more designed for developers, and uh, AI engineers usually are not equipped with uh, uh, necessary uh, knowledge uh, for, uh, uh, for, the, for the necessary Kubernetes knowledge. Uh, so to bridge this gap, um, KSERF is, uh, is designed for like a highly uh, scalable and a standardized based uh, cloud native uh, ML inference platform on Kubernetes, so which encapsulates all the complexity for the Kubernetes deployments um, to simplify the production deployment. Um, so KSERF currently can be deployed as a standalone, so you can like have a serving component running on production environment uh, in an isolated environment. Uh, sometimes because you may not want to like mix the, the training and the serving model in the uh, in the same cluster. So um, and but you can also do like a for experimental or testing um, purpose. You can also uh, deploy as an add-on component with, uh, within a queue flow. Uh, it's which is a CNCF actually is currently uh, moving to CNCF as well um, in both like cloud and on-premises on environment. Uh, so a little history uh, for the KSER project. It was uh, originally introduced uh, back in 2019 KubeCon uh, in San Diego. Not sure if anyone here like was happens to be in that talk, um, but it has been a while. Like so, as you see, like after and the COVID, so then like 2021. So in 2020, like Nvidia contributed the uh, the inference protocol to the project, and in 2021, uh, IBM contributed the model mesh to the KSERF uh, project, uh, and in 20. 22, so as the project the scope continues to uh, expand, so um, it, because it was originally like a, a sub-project, started with a sub-project on the Kubeflow umbrella, and, uh, um, and in late like 2022, we, uh, um, it becomes an independent project, which is currently hosted on the uh, Air for AI Foundation. Um, so as you can see now, there are like 193 contributors and 20 uh, core maintainers, and there are 26 known adopting companies, which is uh, uh, listed, um, but it, there's a lot of no, we may not know uh, which they might be using. And then, according to the survey, uh, there are 63 percent of Kubeflow uh, users, which is using KSERF currently. Um, and uh, you can see all the logos, like uh, which the company uh, currently using KSERF. Um, so yeah, um, next I'm going to talk about the state of the project, so uh, as of uh, case of 0.10 uh, release, the other features we currently support, so it mainly falls into three pillars, core inference, advanced inference, and the model explainability and the monitoring. So uh, on the core inference side, um, we, uh, it offers the uh, uh, feature transformations and uh, 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 inference with a, uh, uh, with a set of like a pre-built serving runtimes, which is shipped out of the standard case of installation. Uh, it also allows you to uh, build your own serving runtime with uh, the custom uh, Python SDK. Uh, you can build your custom serving runtimes, which are, um, can follow all the inf same like uh, standardized inference protocol. Um, and uh, on the uh, uh, advanced inference, we currently um, support like a model mesh, which allows you to deploy thousands of models at scale. And uh, inference graph is used to uh, for the use case where you want to build uh, more sophisticated uh, uh, ML pipelines with multiple models chained together. Um, and uh, uh, for model explainability, we uh, case of offers text, image, and uh, tabular explainers. And uh, uh, for more returning, uh, it supports bias, uh, adversarial, uh, outlier, and drift detectors. Uh, to make sure it, uh, your model is able to produce reliable um, predictions on production. Um, uh, next, let's take a look at the core concepts in the K, uh, KSERF, which is a serving runtime and an inference service. So um, inference service allows to specify the, a model format and the version CU for the given trained model. Uh, and the serving runtime is really defines the, the templates for the parts, which is to serve the uh, one uh, the particular uh, model format, um, and so um, and uh, the serving runtime is really uh, for like a case of admins. So uh, it, it's a you may need a little bit of like Kubernetes knowledge to define the the path back, uh, how to serve your models, and specify the container images and all the arguments in variables, which is necessary to uh, launch the inference service. 
Um, and uh, so, but on the user side, it's the YAML is a lot simpler. So all you, all you, uh, what you only need to specify is the model format and the version of the model. So then KSAP will be able to automatically select based on the model format you specified on the inference service and to use the, uh, the, the right serving runtime to uh, launch your uh, model. Um, so as you can see the, from the matrix, so we, uh, KSOF does support a, a, a wide range of like, serving runtimes, um, and also which covers uh, um, uh, various like, different uh, uh, ML framework, frameworks like Scikit-learn, SGBoost, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, uh, Onyx, um, and you can also bring, uh, build your own custom model format. Um, um, so, um, so we do as KSOF support a variety of like serving runtimes. Um, so it's really important to uh, give user a cohesive uh, inference experience. So KSOF developers uh, uh, inference proto protocol, which uh, uh, enables a standardized uh, high performance like a data plan. Um, so we recently um, as Zira we see a lot more adoptions for this protocol, uh, which is currently already implemented by a Seldon ML server. Uh, Triton Inference Server, TouchSurf, OpenVINO, and AMD Inference Server. So uh, we recently renamed the Inference Protocol to be um, in Open Inference Protocol. So the idea is to uh, we have the core Inference Protocol, and then like uh, we encourage people to like uh, have a forum to like uh, keep improving this protocol, and have everyone or um, the industry like, uh, becomes more like a, a industry standard Inference Protocol for everyone, um, and. Uh, so this really allows the interoperability between all these serving runtimes, and it also, uh, and more importantly, it enables the uh, the uh, capability to building all these client and benchmark tools, which can works with all these serving runtimes without changing your uh, client or like a uh, to tooling as to uh, what, um, for like if you want to experiment with different serving runtimes or models. Um, so the repo is just up as of uh, yesterday. So check out. Uh, um, so, and uh, so here is like an example where like uh, um, you can see like uh, with like a, a Triton inference server uh, runtime and a case of it can cover uh, almost the most of the uh, ML popular ML frameworks. So in this case, you can send the same inputs. It can work with uh, uh, TensorFlow, uh, Triton, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, or, uh, or like uh, SGBoost, SKLearn. Uh, it can use the same input and then it gives the same output back to users. So in this case, you can easily, like uh, uh, when you do the experimentation, you can easily switch between different serving runtimes or different, like even like uh, uh, model, uh, model formats. Uh, so the, the open inference protocol defines the, uh, mainly the REST and the gRPC protocol, which is uh, mainly for the trade-off, like uh, ease of use versus like high performance. Uh, so the, it defines the uh, model uh, server, server health uh, and the model metadata and the core uh, inference endpoint. Um, so let's take a look at the most important like uh, uh, endpoint for for inference. Um, so um, uh, it defines the input and output. You can see like a, a, a tensor uh, a schema where you can define the shapes of your tensor and the data. Uh, the data usually needs to be flattened into the one dimensional array when you send over the while. Uh, and uh, um, so. Uh, data science might be uh, uh, familiar with the uh, um, common data types like a NumPy array or like a pandas data frame. So for NumPy array, you can easily like a co um, uh, translate into like tensor inputs uh, with a consistent data type. Uh, uh, if the shapes are the same, um, but if you're like a, in a pandas data frame, you may have the mixed input types with uh, uh, integers, uh, flow types, or like strings. So in that case, you can define multiple inputs. Uh, each with different uh, can be different shape or different uh, 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 data types. Um, so we do provide the different codecs, which can easily uh, allow you to translate uh, between the the, uh, the NumPy array and the pandas uh, to the t uh, input tensor, which can be like a, a serialized uh, on the wire. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to hand over my code skip to talk about the more exciting stuff about KSERF. Thanks, Dan. Can I? Uh, yeah. Okay, can you? Okay, so uh, here on the left hand side we have the YAML definition where we have we can see the transformer and the predictor where we define, uh, for example, this transformer is connecting to a feature store to fetch the feature vector and send the request to the predictor to do what it's supposed to do 
uh, nicely to do the matrix multiplication between the features and the weights that we have loaded in the model server. So let's see what is the role of KServe here. The KServe controller is reconciling, by, by looking at the inference service, is reconciling a K-native deployment, a K-native serving deployment, which is our core uh, service that we are using to, uh, to deploy our uh, containers, our uh, pods. So on the left-hand side, we have uh, the pods for the transformer, and on the right-hand side, we have the pods for the predictor service. Uh, they I uh, so the, the predictor service, when it's uh, instantiating, when it's initializing, it's using what we call a storage initializer that is loading from the model storage the model file that has been saved after the training process. So the model serving process is tr uh, loading this artifact in the memory of the CPU and then transfer it to the memory of the GPU to do the matrix multiplication. Uh, on the top, we see the AI application that will send the inference request to the transformer service and the transformer service in turn will transform it to a NumPy array of integers or floats to do the, uh, and invoke the predictor. So this is the flow. The AI application is calling the transformer service and then the predictor service gives the prediction back to the transformer to send it with post processing by uh, ad adding some extra things in, in the request. Um, now, let's look at the model storage pattern. We have the storage initializer on the left where if we have a, a directory structure in our uh, cloud storage, we can save different uh, versions of models or different uh, types of models in, in such a directory structure. And then you can load these files in the uh, from the storage initializer to the storage of the pod. And since it's loaded in the storage of the pod, the other container, which is in the pod, the predictor, will load it in the CPU memory and in the GPU memory. The same with the model pooler container. This is the pattern that we are using in the model mess, as we will see later. There are cases that uh, there are use cases where we see customers or companies or uh, users that have a lot of models. And it doesn't make sense to use one model server per model. It, for example, some model files can be one megabyte file uh, in size. Why should I bother to use a whole uh, pod for that one megabyte model? So we have the concept of, uh, of multi-model server where we can host many models in the same model server. Yeah? Um, th this uh, use case is where maybe some data scientists are building models per user. Yeah? Imagine or, uh, uh, models per customer, if this is a pattern for some uh, some use cases. Uh, and if we take the model serv the multi-model server in, in steroids, we do have the model mesh that is uh, make making an agnostic to the model infrastructure where many model servers can run in parallel and receive the models in different versions, different architectures, different formats uh, to host them. The same way we are using the, ser the service mesh, we, are, we can also consider the model mesh as uh, the, the, the advanced uh, multi-model serving. Now, last year we were excited to launch the inference graph. It's very popular among data scientists who want to not only have one model to do the inference, but uh, use a series of models to perform a, a, a sequence of tasks. Let's say an example, uh, a model may be a typical model. Uh, let's say if, uh, an example model would be that we have a, a classifier for uh, animals. And the first model is cl uh, checking if this image that it's receiving is a cat or a dog. Yeah? Then if the outcome of the prediction is that this is a dog, maybe we have a downstream model that is doing classification of what dog breed is this. So conditionally, based on the output of the first model, we can route the traffic to the next model to do the classification of, of a more specialized model. So this is the inference graph, and it's very helpful. Imagine it like a, like a DAG that you define the, the route or the uh, conditions that it can navigate in a sequence or in an ensemble pattern. A, a KSR plays nicely with the rest of the K-native uh, CNCF, uh, with the rest of the CNCF projects. Uh, we already mentioned K-native, which is the core uh, project that we are utilizing, but we are also utilizing Istio for ha for having the ingress uh, uh, gateway, and uh, many other uh, projects that can help us with the security, with the uh, uh, tracing, with the logging, with the metrics, and um, with the faster transportation across the inference requests. Uh, KSR is not part of CNCF. But it's part of Linux Foundation LF, uh, of Linux Foundation AI and data. But we would do, we would like to see KSR uh, being part of CNCF because it plays nicely with the rest of the ecosystem. 
let's see how we are using the K native example. So after the inference request is coming to the ingress controller, sorry, to the ingress gateway, the ingress gateway will route the traffic to the K native service. And the K native service in turn will send the request to the Q proxy, which is the sidecar of the envoy that is running next in the pod together with a transformer and uh, do the prediction and uh, gi give back the response. There are cases that you might have many models that are different versions or different formats that you would like to try. And you might want to have serverless capabilities for model serving. Knative is empowering us of, of using such capabilities because it supports scale down to zero. This is not something that you can get out of the box from Kubernetes with a horizontal pod autoscaler. And the Knative autoscaler is a powerful tool that we love using because we can have our models uh, deployed in our cluster, but turned off. And when there is a request coming, the autoscaler of Knative will, will, will hold it, will receive it, but it will hold it. It will instantiate the model version that needs to serve this particular request and send the request to the uh, transformer and the predictor and give back the response. This is powerful and huge, uh, very, very important capability when you are doing uh, development and testing of different versions or you, when you want to do A-B testing across uh, uh, the next version or the previous version that you had. Uh, the, the service mesh capability that we inherit from Istio is also uh, powerful and if you are using it, uh, you have also most probably seen the benefits because with a sidecar of Envoy uh, deployed in the pods of our transformers and our uh, predictors, we are able to observe this traffic with the monitoring capabilities that Istio is giving us out of the box with a uh, Jagger, for example, to see how is the inference graph uh, traversing across the uh, predictor and the transformer and the request is coming back. This is powerful for troubleshooting. Also, f not only all, uh, for tracing, but also for logging to have the ability to uh, send the uh, requests that are coming to the Envoy proxy to a, to a, a third party uh, logging provider. Also for metrics. Uh, uh, Istio is giving us out of the box the capability with uh, Prometheus metrics that can be stored in another storage. Uh, Istio Ingress Gateway also uh, handles the authentication mechanism. So when the JWT token is, is coming from the uh, SSO or the, uh, the mechanism that provides the authentication and the authorization, is routing it to the pro appropriate services and Envoy is, is also making sure that the communication between the transformer and the predictor is, uh, uh, is authenticated with mutual uh, TLS. Uh, further in security, with the uh, use of Spiffy and the implementation of Spire, uh, we, we have this secure identity framework that uh, the, the, the identity providers providing this, uh, this token that is required by an application that might run on a VM to perform this inference request. And through the attestation process, the, the credentials are being issued for this particular uh, application. Finally, uh, on the observability stack, we are using all these tools already mentioned with Istio and the K Native uh, that are giving us the capability to uh, do the tracing with Open uh, with Hotel to use the cloud event. So we have a cloud agnostic uh, capability to store the logs and transfer transfer them as events maybe to to a, to a bus or a, or a broker that can be further consumed by downstream models like an explainer or a bias detector or uh, some simple model monitoring techniques. But Cloud Events is the core component here that helps us transfer these uh, events, these inference requests, and especially the responses, which is the, 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 the new treasure that you are generating by, by serving models. We want to make sure that we are storing them properly and also doing more things with it. Like, think, do we having class imbalance and do I need to retrain my model because I see that the, the over time this class has more uh, predictions than the other? Etc. Uh, with Jagger and Grafana, of course, these tools out of the box are, are giving us the capabilities to observe uh, the information that is stored through these mechanisms. Um, build packs, of course, is also helping us. Uh, is helping the developers forget about the Docker compo the, 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 the Docker file. They don't have to to, to, to build it. They, they, they don't have to build it, and the security departments of the organizations uh, can apply their policies by. Uh, letting the developers of the transformers only focus on doing their work on building the Python code for the transformer rather than having to uh, define the libraries and the requirements for uh, the transformer. Now, these are the things that we have already, uh, th that are already available and we need to start looking at the future. 
the first thing that we need to uh, to, to share with you is that we, we want to, in the roadmap of going to the version 1.0, we want to graduate all these capabilities that we currently have into the 1.0 version. This is the goal for this year, for the community for of the project, and uh, hopefully will be um, realized at some point. Now, let's take a step back. In 2019, when we launched KServe, we had the BERT model. This is how, this is, so see here, here in history how there is a logarithmic scale of the number of parameters that we see uh, in the model uh, sizes. We have more and more large models and KServe, when it was built, it was there to host uh, models of, I don't know, 300 million parameters, which is like one gigabyte file. Fair enough, you can load it in the CPU memory, you can load it in the cool uh, GPUs, but now we have one trillion parameters from GPT-4. How do we even host this in a, in a, in a, in a server that, is, uh, that requires 400 gigabytes of parameter, of parameter uh, values? How do, how do you serve it and how do you make sure that it's fast enough? So we do believe that the future for the project is to support these language models and uh, we will discuss with you some of the capabilities and some of the challenges and some of the, of the tools that we have to, to help you get there. So first of all, uh, because we have hundreds of billions of parameters, we have large size, yes? And this means large transform, uh, tr uh, transports, uh, tr large transport cost, a large time to complete this co uh, transfer, but also how to, to break it down to different GPUs is a challenge. So the NVIDIA Faster Transformer can allow us to use the acceleration engine and support many GPUs and nodes uh, in a distributed fashion. The Hugging Face Accelerate is a mechanism that is splitting the file, let's say the, the, four giga, the 400 gigabyte file of the GPT into smaller chunks that can be loaded in the shards of the GPU uh, to, 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 to calculate it in a distributed fashion. The Tensor Parallelism is allowing us to do that across multiple GPUs in the same node. And finally, the Pipeline Parallelism is what is allowing us to do that across multiple GPUs and multiple nodes that are running GPUs. So this way we can stack many nodes, the one after the other, uh, that, and all their memory is loading the, uh, the weights uh, with the chunks that we have mentioned. Now, some of the challenges that we see by deploying such models uh, are the following. Since the cost of the transfer is large, we need to make sure that somehow maybe we are doing caching. We need to take into account also the latency. How do we make sure that the inference request that will do the matrix multiplication across all GPUs of all nodes will be that fast that will the user will not wait? When you, when you use chat GPT, you don't wait a lot for the response. It gives you the response within a, a couple of seconds. So an example model file is the Bloom model. Yeah, this is a large language model that is available through Hugging Face. This is a f almost 400 gigabyte uh, size. It has 176 billion parameters. This file, with the help of the accelerate, can be split into uh, 72 chunks of or splits of, of five gigabyte file. And then the normal GPUs that we have in our normal uh, nodes can handle this, can load this file, and then this, uh, the distribution is, is happening on the inference request. Other challenges are the transfer cost or the transfer time between the, the cloud provider storage that you have, like S3, where you load the model in the pod of the container that is running in the node. That takes time. And we have seen implementations and contributions that people are sharing, uh, are, are casting this uh, model into N NVMe storage, for example. Uh, the same challenges are with transfers. Now, the Faster Transformer or Triton is a, a pod itself, uh, is an image that is 32 gigabytes of size. This is another challenge that we see. How do you even load such a container? We are struggling to make the containers a few megabytes, not to have them in the size of 32 gigabytes. So maybe as a demo here, do we have time? Five minutes? Okay. So th this is an inference request to send a, a, a if it's working, let's try. So we have an inference service here with a predictor in the spec that defines that is the model format is Triton. And we have the storage URI uh, where we have saved our GPT model. And the transformer is defining the path for the tokenizer that will transform the, the text into uh, integers or tokens that will be in the input of the model. 
if I'll, uh, uh, and this is a custom container that you can also find the code in the samples directory of uh, kserve. If I will send the inference request, I already got back the response. The inference request is a post to, uh, to an endpoint uh, that is running the Istio ingress, and the input says Kubernetes is the best platform to serve your models because, and I want 15 uh, tokens back or 15 words back as an answer. And the model is telling me, is doing some reasoning and it's telling me that because it's a cloud-based service that is built, etc., etc. So this cap and of course we can also see the uh, the log files if we want on the pod to see that the request has been received. These are the pods that are running with a 32 gigabyte of image. And if we look at the log of the uh, the KSERF container, for example, we can see the challenges that uh, that we have into loading the model file within uh, a matter of a few minutes, so from 31 to 33 last night. Uh, let me go back to the slides. So these, cha uh, uh, these challenges, I don't know if this is visible, but I have a sample here of a three, giga oops, a three gigabyte file uh, that is uh, downloaded from uh, from hugging phase, and then through the use of the faster transformer, we are splitting this file into smaller chunks, and each dense layer is saved in a, in a separate file of a 16 megabyte file that will appropriately be stored in the GPU specific uh, shard that uh, we have uh, got from our uh, model server. Other challenges, oops, other challenges, the storage initializer takes, let's say, one minute to load a two gigabyte file. The predictor takes 10 seconds to copy the model file from the pod storage to the uh, CPU and the GPU memory, and the sharding technique is visualized like that. So, Dan, would you like to continue? Uh, use case here for the, uh, the GPU model. So uh, as some of me, you know, uh, so recently Bloomberg published the, uh, the Bloomberg GPT, which is uh, purposely built like with the uh, 50 billion parameters large language model, uh, which was built like a uh, uh, trained from scratch for finance domain. Um, so uh, it uh, actually outperforms the general model uh, in the uh, in the financial uh, financial tasks, um, but without uh, sacrificing the uh, sacrificing the uh, accuracy on the general for the general task as well. Um, so the model is trained up approximately 53 days on 64 servers, uh, each with uh, eight A100 GPUs on AWS SageMaker. Um, however, the model is actually uh, served uh, internally on prime. Um, because of the data privacy issues uh, as well as the uh, the cost, uh, so um, so the the model is deployed uh, on the NVIDIA Triton uh, faster server as the uh, Ciro just demoed, uh, pretty similar. Um, so the serving uh, the model is on two A100 GPUs for each replica. Uh, each GPU is with like 80 uh, gig uh, GPU memory. Um, so the so the model is uh, uh, converted to faster transformer format. Uh, from the hugging phase ch checkpoints, uh, which is uh, we set the target precision to BF16, uh, which gives a better accuracy. Uh, the tensor parallelism is set to two, and the pipeline parallelism is to one, which means it's uh, sharded. Uh, the models are sharded on across two A100 GPUs. Um, and uh, so you can check out more details about the Bloomberg GPT on the price and the paper uh, linked here. Um, and uh, so this is uh, 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 like uh, how the deployment looks like, which is like uh, uh, I think you already showed the YAML. So this is like from the and uh, uh, we have the pre-processing with the tokenizer, uh, which it takes the text input and then and converts to input tokens, uh, sent over via like a gRPC to the uh, Triton uh, faster transformer predictor, and it gets back the generate the tokens. So another thing we are kind of working on is to streaming the token back because uh, sometimes it may take a long time for a large number of tokens. Uh, so uh, it will make the uh, user a little more interactive to get the tokens back while running the inference. And uh, so as you can see, the models are shared like on to uh, A100 GPUs. And, uh, and uh, you can see some metrics we got collected from the, the models. So we used about like 65% of the GPU memory. And then sometimes the, the GPU utilization can really hit 100% on A100 GPU. Um, so the latency is around like a, a few seconds uh, on average. Um, so um, yeah, that's uh, conclude our talk. And uh, uh, we really want like uh, having new contributors join our project and then pave our way to the 1.0 like version 
uh, roadmap. So the, here are the links, and uh, if you have any questions, and then feel free to reach out to the community uh, to see or me. Um, yeah, I'll open up the questions. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the uh, model mesh. Uh, currently, we using, we trying to use uh, model mesh, and um, we struggle with the scaling of the runtime, because as I know, currently th there is no auto scaling. It's a. Uh, I believe the model mesh maintainers are currently working on the horizon so like scaling for the. You are talking about scaling the semi runtime, right? Yeah, yeah, they are currently working on that. Uh, so check out that I believe there's a PR already up. We uh, talked about Keda just to scale it uh, based on metrics. Maybe mm -hmm. it's good way. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not. Maybe it's your way. But this is what we thought. We thought. And uh, another question about the um, we using Triton. Okay. So we have Triton adapter that uh, download the S3, mm -hmm. and uh, currently we can't use Irsa. It's your side. Um, I know that storage initializer, uh, I think it's really, really new, using right now with IRSA to download uh, from S3. When it's come to model mesh and Triton, adapter, mm -hmm. there is a roadmap for that, because it's really, it's make me fight with my uh, security guys, because <laughs> I'm using an IMEA user currently. I see. It's bad for me. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, maybe we can catch up like after. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, can you? Um, I think that I saw some uh, commenting issues that uh, currently is there is no option, and uh, in the roadmap it will be, it will come. Maybe you know something that I <laughs> don't know. Yeah, we will catch up later. Yeah, we can catch up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other question? Yes. Um, thank you for this presentation. Uh, my question is, why don't you support a simple model like CatBoost in the table you presented? Uh, yeah, as a, another flavor of like a kind of boost kind of model, right? So yeah, so. As uh, you can, it's pretty straightforward to implement that. I think they're probably an open issue. I've seen that before. Um, but yeah, feel free to contribute if you think this is like a widely used or like, uh, but you can always bring your like, uh, you can implement it and, and uh, because like uh, you can add additional like a serving runtime. It's just like in addition to like the pre shipped like the serving runtimes, so you can always add your own serving runtimes. It's pretty flexible and you can like bring your own like runtimes. Um, but you do think it's useful for the community, so feel free to contribute that. I have a second question is, uh, does uh, the multimodal serving support confidential con containers? How you can do confidential containers with multimodal serving? Uh, sorry, the I asking the model mesh for, or? The, no, can you, uh, does, does it support confidential containers? No? Uh, sorry, what the question? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Like in class containers. In class. Con yes, uh, type of containers. What is that? No, I don't know. Okay. Oh, maybe we can like uh, <laughs> talk after. <laughs> sorry, I didn't get the question. Yeah. Uh. By the way, there is a ML server from Seldon supports Cat Boost, and you can load it in KSF. There is a PR there that you can l if find the exit. If, uh, if it's like a MS server already supports that, then we should be able to run no. it too. No. Yeah. I, is there any other question? All right, thank you for coming here yeah. today. Thanks, everyone.